People often mistakenly think of a cataract as being a growth or a film over the eye that affects the vision. This, in fact, isn't the case. We're all born with a naturally clear lens inside our eye that focuses the light and provides us with a clear image of the things we see. When this lens becomes cloudy, we refer to it as a cataract. For most people, cataract is a result of the aging process. In fact, cataract is the leading cause of blurred vision in people over the age of 55. Eye trauma, certain medications such as steroids, and diabetes are also risk factors for the development of cataract. The treatment of cataract is surgical with removal of the cataract from the eye using ultrasound and its replacement with a clear artificial lens implant. Years ago this was quite an ordeal. The patient would have to stay in the hospital for several nights as the eye healed up. The incision in the eye was quite large and required many stitches. Here today at Watson Clinic we perform minimally invasive cataract surgery on an outpatient basis. The patient goes home the day of surgery. Oftentimes, we're able to perform no needle anesthesia using just drops or ointments to numb up the eye. The incision we make in the eye is quite small, usually not requiring any stitches. The reason we can make such a small incision in the eye is because we have at our disposal foldable lens implants. When we make an incision and we take the cataract out using ultrasound, we then take the lens implant and fold it like a taco. We then place it into a syringe and we inject it into the eye where it unfolds in its proper position. In this way, the patient experiences their best possible vision with minimal recovery time. In the past, this wasn't possible. Today, here at Watson Clinic, it's a reality. Well, with traditional lens implants during cataract surgery, patients often achieve their best vision with glasses. But nowadays, many patients want to decrease their dependence on glasses after surgery. For them, we have amazing new technology which allows them to do so, and this is with different types of lens implants. Now, not all lens implants are perfect for everybody, so we try to match a patient's visual needs with the technology of the lens implant. For example, if you have a 63-year-old tennis player who does a lot of night driving, that person's going to have very different visual needs than an 85-year-old grandmother who stays at home and does a lot of reading throughout the day. Glaucoma is an eye disease associated with damage to the eye nerve. Everyone's eye has an eye nerve that takes what the eye sees and transfers it to the brain for interpretation. In glaucoma, it is this structure known as the optic nerve that gets damaged. When this nerve gets damaged, it results in vision loss and potentially blindness. Well, there are several risks for developing glaucoma in addition to family history probably being a major risk factor. Uh, they would include having diabetes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure even, African Americans are at increased risk, as well as those individuals who are very nearsighted. Those individuals should make sure they have a screening exam if they haven't done so recently. Most people who have glaucoma have an elevated eye pressure inside their eye. There's always fluid being created inside the eye and this exerts a pressure within the eye. In glaucoma, most of these patients have a high pressure, however, there are patients who have a normal pressure or even a low pressure and still develop glaucoma damage. So clearly, pressure is not the only part of the story. The most common form of glaucoma here in the United States is primary open angle glaucoma. In this form of glaucoma, there are no symptoms. There's no eye redness, no eye pain, and the patient doesn't lose vision until the end stages of the disease. Because of this, because of the disease being asymptomatic without symptoms, for this reason it's important for patients to have routine eye exams to rule out glaucoma. Another form of glaucoma, a less common form, is known as narrow angle glaucoma. In this form of glaucoma, the pressure in the eye goes acutely very high, and the patient does present with eye pain, eye redness, and decreased vision acutely. We diagnose and follow glaucoma by performing certain tests. First, we take the pressure in the eye. As I stated previously, most patients who have glaucoma have an elevated pressure inside their eye, and we have specialized equipment that measure this pressure. Second, we perform what's called a visual field test. In glaucoma, it's the peripheral vision that gets damaged first, first early on. We have a machine that flashes lights in the periphery of the patient's vision, and the patient presses a button when they detect this light. In this way, we are able to detect early glaucoma damage. Finally, we perform what's called computerized optic nerve scanning. 
When glaucoma occurs, the optic nerve actually changes in its shape very subtly and very slowly. This computer is used to detect that change. So the, really the only way to really diagnose glaucoma is with a complete eye exam looking at the optic nerve. We don't have a cure for glaucoma. However, we are able to slow down the progression of the disease by using eye medications in the form of eye drops to lower the pressure in the eye. When these eye drops do not sufficiently lower the pressure in the eye, sometimes it is necessary to perform glaucoma laser surgery in the office or even perform glaucoma surgery in the operating room to lower the pressure in the eye. Usually this is not really necessary because the drops we have today are quite effective in keeping the pressure down. Dry eyes are another prevalent condition in this country as well as around the world. And the symptoms can be very varied from blurred vision to burning, irritation, or a gritty sensation in the eyes. In fact, perhaps one of the most common symptoms is tearing. Now that sounds contradictory. If your eyes are dry, why would they tear? But if you think about it, the tearing is a reflex mechanism to help coat the eye when the brain thinks the eyes are dry. However, these aren't the regular kind of tears, so they don't lubricate the eye well. In the past, all we would do is say use some artificial tears, which you can buy over the counter without prescription. But nowadays we have several other treatment regimens. We can use things such as fish oil pills or even restasis, which is an excellent prescription medication. But we don't want to forget about lifestyle changes too. You want to stay well hydrated and of course try to avoid direct blowing air right on the eye, such as from ceiling fans or air conditioning.